Welcome. I'm your host for Encounter, Evangelist Alfredia Flowers, PhD. And it is my privilege to help you encounter God. Encounter is designed to help you encounter the true vine, Jesus Christ. He loves, he saves, he heals, he delivers. And so today I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go into, I'm going, I've am going. i been sharing some from books that I wrote. And we're just going to continue that today. And so we'll be looking at, I'll read a disclaimer before I read the books. So I'm going to pray first and then I'll do the disclaimer. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. You are so awesome, magnificent, and worthy of every praise. We say, come, Holy Spirit, with your wisdom, with your guidance. Come and have it, the praises of your people. We love you. We magnify you. Holy, holy, holy art thou. Holy, holy, holy art thou. Oh, we bless your name. Come with your presence. Come with your healing. Come with your deliverance. Come, Father. I thank you, Father, that you tore the veil when Jesus died in our place. And we thank you for it. We can come directly to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. We are empowered by the Holy Ghost, who you sent to indwell those that believe. And we say, have your way, Holy Spirit, today. And help us to encounter you in a new and fresh way. We pray, Abba Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. So be it. Amen. All right. I'm so excited. Do you feel his presence? Let's just give a wave offering to him. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Take a hand in your hand. Blow on your breath. You feel that? That means you alive. That means God has a plan for you still. So thank you. This thank you, Father, for your plan for my life. Now, I am going to read the disclaimer, and then we're going to jump right in. And this is from the book that I've written called Encounter, My Story and My My Story and Workbook. And I have actually you can buy a paperback the workbook separately or the the actual is my testimony of my encounter with God. It took me from feeling rejected to receiving his acceptance as well as accepting myself. And so it's written in a testimony form. And both of those are found in the hardback, accepted my story and workbook. And the disclaimer is as follows. I am not a counselor or medical doctor. The information in Accepted Workbook, A Road to Acceptance, or Accepted My Story is not meant to replace seeking professional help if you are receiving professional help for physical, emotional, or mental illness. Continue until you are released from their care. Accepted My Story and Accepted Workbook, A Road to Acceptance. Share some of the tools I use on my road to self-acceptance. The book helped, the tools helped me take hold of the acceptance that God provided for me. May they, they may help you too, but I take no responsibility for your outcome. All right, so with that, we're going to move forward. Oh, this is powerful. We're going to actually, the, the topic today is <laughs> God starts the dialogue because encountering God, he's ever present. But sometimes we just need to take time to focus on that, to become aware of his very presence. And so I'm going to, we're going to do this by, we. When I, this one is entitled, God starts the dialogue and he's dialogued with man down through the centuries and he left his word, the Bible, 
it's a record of people's encounters with God. And so today, that's where we're going to start. We're going to let him start the dialogue. And I'm going to read from the New American Standard Bible, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this dark darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so you will be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm. Therefore, having your loins, you girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, take up the shield of faith, which will be with which you will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert. And all perseverance and petitions for the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, that's something right there. I mean, this is a story. This is actually a letter that Paul, the Apostle Paul, who did not follow Jesus during his life, but had an encounter with him after he rose from the dead, when he was out persecuting, having Christians killed, but God had a plan for him. And he, he experienced him on the road to Damascus and he experienced blindness and he experienced God healing him. He experienced Jesus himself speaking to him and calling him into ministry. And then he is at this point, he's, a, he's writing a letter to the Ephesians who he's in prison. He's a prisoner, so he's around these soldiers. So he takes an opportunity, they're aware of Roman soldiers, to use the armor. We Spiritually, we put it on. We don't necessarily have to put this on in the natural. But explaining how we protect ourselves, because once you accept Jesus, now you become the enemy of God's enemy. And therefore, we have to be ready because he comes. He came to Jesus. And tempted him. So we have to be ready to. And so in the armor, we see I've got a flag because the banner, his banner over us is love. Yes, I've got a banner. I've got a shield, the shield of faith. Faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith. Faith is believing what we cannot see, holding on to the word of God. Well, we have not seen it manifest yet. Holding on. That's faith. We have the helmet of salvation. That is knowing that we know that you know that you've accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And because he died again, rose again from the dead. And you've accepted him and accepted him and confess with your mouth that you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead. And you want to follow him. You want to be obedient to him. Then you are born again. You are the family God. You have salvation. And th- that helmet is important because the enemy of our souls comes to try to convince us otherwise. <laughs> so, because he even did it to Jesus, the, the father, you got to hold on to the word that God speaks. God told Jesus, I'm your son in whom I well please. Then soon after that, and he was filled to, with overflow to the Holy Spirit and the enemy of his soul, the enemy came and said to him, 
if you be, try to put doubt in there. The enemy will try to put doubt in your heart. If you be the son of God, but he knew he was. So he used the word of God. He spoke what God spoke in the word of God against the lies of the enemy. And so that's what we're learning to do. So spiritually, don't necessarily have to put these things on in the natural. And then the breastplate of righteousness, protecting your heart, knowing that you know that you know that you know you're in right standing. You can be convicted when you do things wrong, but not condemned because the blood of Jesus, what we've done in the past is in the under the blood. So much so that even though Paul had persecuted Christians, he could say, I've wronged no man because he was born again. That old man that did all that was gone. And when we make a mistake, if we confess our sins, if we, it's like washing our feet. If we, we repent and say, God, I'm so sorry. Help me not to do that again, you know, because it says he will to will and to do of his good pleasure. And therefore, you've got the the helmet, the shield, the breastplate, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm. That's what Jesus used, the word of God, the word of God. And then you have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel, ready to share the gospel. But one other thing about the truth of the loin girt about the belt of truth is that it protects, it protects. And it also, the Roman soldiers, they would, when they wanted to be able to move, they would, they could part of their garment in to the belt. So it gives you the ability, ready to move, able to move, know your loins, and know that you're protected. So this is very important. So, But we're going to look at this in a new light. What is God saying to you about this? What is he saying? And I'm going to read something. I'm going to pull up another slide that we're going to look at, which is from, this is found in my book, except at my story and workbook on page. I'm going to be reading from pages 152 and 153. And this is something that this model I actually, when I was attending Global School of Supernatural Ministry, our second year pastor, Kathy Durrell, gave, gave me permission to use this. And we use this often just to allow God to dialogue to us through the scripture. So I'm going to show this and read this. And then I wanted to you to take time to actually utilize this for yourself because you'll be able to utilize it by these four. It's just taking a piece of paper and put it in four parts, writing down. First of all, we're going to meditate on the scriptures. We just, we're going to go back to the scripture we just saw, meditate on it and see what do we know about the scripture? What do we see? What does it bring? What, what does it bring to our mind's eye, our spiritual eye? What do we hear? What do we hear God saying? Our other scriptures coming to us. So I want you to to get something to write with if you don't already have it. If, you, if you're not able to get something to write with, maybe you can record these things in your phone. And so, and if you're not good at writing, you can draw pictures related to these things. Again, record it in your phone. So I'm going to actually read from my book. God Starts the Dollar. Kathy Doyle of Global Awakening used another way to record prayer dialogue similar to Habakkuk chapter one and two in her with her permission I share her recording recording process the information was also included in two books I wrote healing encounter primer on pages 131 through 133 and on page 224 of Crossing Racial Lines, Uncovering God's Plan. Kathy Doral suggests making a large cross on a sheet of paper into four boxes or folding the paper into quarters. Then she labeled the four boxes, see, hear, know, and scriptures. She instructs everyone to ask the Holy Spirit to speak as they read the scripture passages or a chapter of the Holy Bible. If you highlighted something, Kathy Doro, and by stopping and allowing God to speak, if God highlighted something, Kathy Doro advised you to stop and allow God to speak. If you do not did not perceive 
God speaking to you, begin recording what you know about the passage. Record what you see, hear, and any other scriptures that come to mind. And you see, I've modified it just a little bit. I put other scriptures because we're starting with the scripture. And sometimes for me, it begins to unfold as I begin to write the scripture. If nothing has come before, I just re record the scripture. So, and this is a lot. So sometimes I'll just be like one thing out of that whole thing about the armor of God or God maybe it's beginning begin to speaking to you about I, I the first part for me is it when I, I really think about this this really standing out for me is the part about standing. So I'm gonna read for me it was verses 10 and 11. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, put on the full armor of God so you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. That was really speaking to me as I was reading to stand firm. Because there are many times when God tells us to fight, he will fight for us. So that's what the picture that I I I know that God fights for us. And so I might put something there about knowing God sometimes fight for us. Sometimes we just have to stand. And I could just see myself just standing on the word of God, standing my ground against the onslaught. Oftentimes the enemy fights us in our mind, the onslaught. Hearing what God is saying, God, what are you saying? If you don't hear anything, I talk to God some more. What are you saying? about this situation that I'm standing. And the word of God that you stand on shouldn't be, be any word, but something that's meaningful against the attack of the enemy. And if he brings other scriptures, share that. You can even look them up if you, if you feel led to pursue that. So I'm just going to take a moment now. And if, if God is bringing another scripture that he wants to speak to you about, that's fine. But just give you a moment to ask God to speak to you about the armor of God and how to stand against the enemy. And this process, you can continue this on. So as I said, for me, knowing God fights, sometimes we don't have to do anything. But other times he will give us instruction. And other examples have been coming to my heart and mind. For example, when I would share it, when Jesus used the word of God to fight on his behalf. And I also thought about when the children of Israel, when they had to go up against Jericho because God had given them. He gave them a word. They were standing on the promise that he'd given them the Canaan land, but they had to go in and possess it. So when they did, he gave an unusual instruction, told them to walk around the Jericho seven days, seven for seven days, walk around and don't say anything. And on the seventh day, they walked around seven times, blew the trumpet, shouted, the wall fell. And then they went in and possessed the land. And that's an odd strategy. Sometimes God gives an odd strategy to fight the battle. And sometimes, like David, <laughs> he was standing on what God had done for him when he went to fight Goliath. He, 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 out of his mouth, he told Goliath, the Lord has helped me slay a bear, has helped me slay, slay a, a lion, and he will help me take you down. He did, I'm paraphrasing. And he did just that. He was standing firm, and he didn't have a, a physical sword, but he had a slingshot because that sword was not what he was used to working with. So God, these are spiritual weapons of whatever spiritual weapons God has given you to work with. Utilize those, but move in truth. You move in the truth of what God has said to you. And so, Father, I just thank you. 
and ask you to continue to speak to those that are watching this now. Speak, I pray, victory. Victory, your word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and not loving our lives unto the death. So we will we'll be like the, the Hebrew boys at the fiery furnace. They they said that you could deliver them, but they would huh, they would not they would not sin. They would not bow to even the king. Even if they died, they said if it, you could deliver, but they they would still stand on what you said, promised them that he was the he is you were the only one they were to worship, and they stood on it. They went into the fiery furnace, and you delivered them, Father. I pray that those that are standing on your word, standing with you, that they will see you as deliverer, see you as deliverer in Jesus' name, see you as healer. In Jesus' name, oh, go Holy Spirit to every home and every heart. Bring your, uh, let them encounter you, encounter your love, encounter your peace. The, the shoes, of the, the feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yours is peace. Give them peace that passes all understanding. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Fresh encounters today by your precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And these are some of the other books that I've written. And I also want to say that oh, we have something for children. Yes, I, I am on two programs. When I work with the children, I go by Minister Alfredia Flowers or Ma. And the program is Jesus Super Teen. And it's just about how God wants to use them as children. And then, of course, encounter. And I just use my, I'm, I've been called to the Office of Evangelist, so I use that. And I have earned a PhD in church history. And so I bring those things to the table. But most of all, I bring the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you to encounter him. Encounter him. Encounter the true vine. Jesus Christ, the true vine. The true and the living God. Encounter his love. This is my our desire. And we bless God. We thank you for being here today. We thank you for allowing us to be part of your experience. And may you know our Savior even the more. He loves you. God loves you. Jesus died. He loves you so much. He sent his son Jesus to die in our place that we can walk in victory over the enemy that we can put on the armor of God and stand firm and we can speak the word. We have the victory. We just need to take, take hold of it. We need to walk in the promises of God. So I encourage you today. And as I, as we have already said, God loves you. I love you too. Be blessed until the next time.